Hey kid, it's Dad. Today's question is, what's with Mukrata? Why is Mukrata such a big thing in Thailand? What is it? Well, today, we're gonna learn how to Mukrata like a boss. So some of the lockdown restrictions have been lifted and your mom's been really excited about doing Mukrata again. So Murukata is a quintessential Thai dining experience. You'll hear it described as Thai barbecue. Kid, I know you've come to Murukata with us already, but for anybody who doesn't know, or doesn't know what it's called, or has just seen it or heard about it, or wants to do it, doesn't know where to go or how it works, well, you know what? We're here for you. Murukata is related to Chinese hot pot related to Korean barbecue but it is its own thing it is two words put together mu is pig and kata is pan sometimes you'll see it translated that way you'll see pork pan well that's why and here you have more than pork just like cow stands in for any kind of food in gin cow well here Pork stands in for all the different things that you eat this way. So you've got a few different elements that make up mukata. You've got the ingredients and you've got the, the pork pan and you've got the coals underneath. And the way it works is it has a dual cooking surface. So you've got your dome on the top where you're cooking your meat and then you have this trough all around where you cook your vegetables. So when you're doing your mukata, you want to get that uh, big chunk of fat burning away on the top there. And that's so that your meat isn't going to stick to the top. It's at your cooking surface. That's like your grill. You're going to take this little pot of water, you're going to fill up that little reservoir that goes around there, and you're going to start piling in your vegetables. Now it's also where you're going to cook your fish. If you got any fish or eggs, sometimes that's there too. A good mukrata is going to have lots of different ingredients. So just because there are a lot of mukrata doesn't mean that they all are created equal. It took us a while to find this place that we like. There's a few things that you're looking for when you want to do mukrata. First, take a look at the tables. Take a look at the kind of place that it is. You know, when they got that hole in the middle, you know that it's a planned out kind of place. Setting up a mukata, I think, has a kind of a low barrier to entry. And there's fly-by-night mukata that you really want to avoid. Because the provenance of the ingredients is questionable. And you don't want food that's questionable. It's the next thing you want to do. Look at what kind of food do they have. Does it look fresh? Are they making some efforts to keep flies off the food? You know, is some of the food covered? Are the employees attentive? Uh, when stuff runs out, do they replace it? Are there enough employees around? Is there someone tending the fire to refill coals? It's a pretty cool little setup, but the food is only half of Mukrata. The other half is the experience and being out with friends, being out with family. Mukrata is a social event. I think that adds to its popularity here because Mukrata isn't quick. It's not fast food. Mukrata is meant to be a leisurely experience. So if you're gonna do Mukrata, expect to be there for a couple hours. Mukrata is not to be rushed. So kid, that's our Mukrata. This is our place. One day you will also find your own place. And for any of you watching and listening, I hope I've given you what you need to find out where you wanna go and what kind of places are, are worth going to or what to watch out for. That's gonna do it for this one, kid. Until the next video, I'll see you later. Well, that is a lot of crap on the back of your little scooter.